So what I would like to do here with this sample is explain how you can take an invisible piece of software and raise its profile so people can monitor it and get a little bit of insight onto what it's doing. So what I've got in front of us here in Visual Studio is a very very simple pretend Windows system service. For the scope of this example it's going to be running as a, a console app just because it's easy to demonstrate. But as you can see all it does is print something to the screen in an infinite loop, sleeping for a little while and counting the number of messages that have been printed. So if I run this now, all you're going to see is, hello, this is some busy work printed over and over again every five seconds. So here we go, you can see it working now, so I'm going to shut it down. So what I'm going to do is, is use a, a great micro web framework called Nancy, which is a originally a clone or an inspired interpretation of the the Ruby framework Sinatra for .NET and you see what they did there with the naming. Um, what we're going to do is show you how you can use Nancy to, to gain some visibility on this particular application. So one of the great things that Nancy does is supports running as an embedded web server so if you have Windows system services you can use it to to add on a really really decent modern web framework and UI and all that kind of stuff especially APIs right on top. So first things first I need to take the, the functionality and the code in front of us and wrap it up in a task so that the the code continues to execute and allows us to, to spin something else up at the same time. All I'm going to do is make a, a task of T just going to start off by picking up the code that we have here and dumping it in there. And I want to show you how this doesn't change the function of the code whatsoever. So let's just start the work. So if I hit run here, obviously you get the new message because it reaches the end while the task is still spinning. But there we go, we've got our infinitely running task in the background and I can now hit exit. Great. So what we want to do is, is rejig this code so that Nancy has access to it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make another class called stats. With a property on the top. Called iterations, real simple DTO. And now I've got an object with stats, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and instead of incrementing this value here, we're going to do this. So now we have a stats object outside of the scope of this task, and we're starting the task. So what we're going to see now, if we run it, is exactly the same thing. Great. So the next thing we need to do is add Nancy into the mix. So Nancy is really really well componentized and it's all available on NuGet. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is spin up another task which we're going to use to host the Nancy runtime. In. So now I've got another empty task. start the UI. Great, so there's obviously nothing going on here, there's just another task infinitely running. So now we're going to go to NuGet, and we're going to add Nancy. So you're going to need Nancy, and for this particular example we're going to need the self-host, and we'll probably need the Razor View Engine. The Nancy hosting is, is super simple to actually get working, so all I'm going to do is type this, start a new Nancy host, 
new URI, and we're going to go with localhost 1337, because the old jokes are the best jokes. And we're going to say start. So obviously start is a blocking operation, and we're just going to leave it like that. So. So if I now run this application and I, I grab this URI in a browser, you're going to notice that Nancy's now complaining that there's, there's nothing to see here because we haven't defined any Nancy modules nor have we given it its conventions bootstrapper. So what I'm going to do now is go through the basic Nancy setup to just hang together a simple project. So by default, Nancy likes looking for a directory called content, so it's very heavily convention based. They've got great docs that you can follow. But all I'm going to do is, is stop this, this running, and I'm going to add a content directory. I'm going to stick a, te a test HTML file in here. So now we've got this test HTML file, we, we're just going to mark this as a content file so it gets deployed to the bin for the moment. So I'm going to stick coffee if newer on there. And I'm going to hit F5 and we spin up again. And now if we go back to the browser, if we jump back to the browser now, I can do this. And you'll see the content is now being served from within your app. So if I shut this down, we're going to timeout. So that's the first step. So what we're going to do now is add our first Nancy module. So obviously I'm going to jump back to programs here. So the way that Nancy works is it auto discovers modules um, and a Nancy module effectively is like a, I suppose like a controller if you're familiar with MVC but they, they can be used to organize code in, in different ways than your, your very very standard model view controller pattern. So I'm just going to jump down here and throw in a Nancy module. And let's go for broke, let's make it an API. So Nancy modules have a base class of Nancy module and you can specify the the, the parent node of the URI, so the, the, the resource that you're describing in the default constructor. What I've done here is I've set the root up to, to default to API. Now that I've done this, I'm going to add uh, our very first method in here. So the broadly the syntax supports the HTT verbs that you've heard of. So I'm going to implement a get method by adding to, to the root builder that's declared on the Nancy module base class. So, so what we can do is we can add a method called status. That's not what I was looking for. It's because I got the syntax wrong. So here I have defined a a method called status that will be called on the API resource. Now you're going to notice that resharper is complaining and that's because I've not returned anything for this method. So for the sake of argument, let's just return hello. So this is what the, the method looks like and if I switch back to my browser now, I can drop that in and I get nothing. I'll execute the server again and I get hello. Obviously that isn't very useful, and this is just raw text, there is nothing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to return something useful. So in the real world when you're doing this you, you would use some kind of DI container probably to, 
to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to do it a, a mean and hacky way for, for demonstration purposes. So on, on program, I'm going to put a public static stats object, which will replace this. So now that I'm going to declare my stats here, I'll remove this altogether. I'll stick a public on here. So now as my, my server runs, it's going to increment a static object. So down here in my Nancy API module, in the get method, I should be able to access the stats object. So now once I run my server, you'll notice that I'm now surfacing information from the stats object through the Nancy UI. So this is the simplest form of, of hanging together something that resembles monitoring. Obviously you're going to want to do something a lot more significant here. Um, the way that I tend to do these kinds of things is I will set up my container. Nancy comes with, with its own DI container built in, but I mean I prefer generally to use an inject. You would bind your statistics containers up as singletons and inject them both into your services that, that need to record stats and inject them into the, the Nancy modules that need to surface the stats. At that point, you can actually build a, a fully-fledged web app on top of Nancy that surfaces data from, from an underlying system service that's doing some important work. Um, in, a, in a following video, I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate a, a much more complete example with a, a, a fancy bootstrapped web interface to show you just how sophisticated you can make some of these monitoring tools. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this here for now, and I will upload the sample to GitHub. I mean, there's obviously not very much to it, but it, it acts as a, a reasonable example of, of almost a quick start to just sur surface some of those really really invisible portions of your code that nobody sees, nobody knows when they break, and you struggle to monitor for uptime short of the process is working.